And so let's just thank him for these four areas that we talked about last week in, in our small groups. Heavenly Father, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for saving us. Lord, when I think of all the things you've saved us from in the past, I remember the day you took my sins away, the day I repented. Lord, I felt so free. I felt so free, Lord. And it's not been just one time, but many, 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 many thousands of times I have called upon you and you have cleansed me. You have saved me from myself. You have saved me from, Lord, my situations. Lord God, you have saved me from many challenges and difficulties. God, you desire to save me from my own weakness and failings, Lord. And I thank you today that you're willing to overshadow us and cleanse us and raise us up, Lord. Not only have you saved us, but you're saving us today. Your word says today is the day of salvation. And we look to you, Lord, because you will save us if we will allow you to today. This is the day. This is the time. This is the season. This is the hour, Lord. Is there anybody that has a need tonight? Would you lift it up to him? Lord, we ask you to save us, deliver us from this. Lord God, we release it to you. We trust in you. We put our hope in you. We're not trusting in what man could do or other people could do. Lord God, we're looking to you first and foremost. And God, above all, Lord Jesus, this is why we pray tonight. And then we look to our future. God, we look to our future. Lord, so many don't want to look to their future, but I have a hope beyond this world. Lord, I have a hope of salvation. Lord, that I will no longer be in this body of death. Lord, no longer, uh, Lord, dealing with my own weaknesses and failings. God, there's coming a day, and it could be today, when you come to take me home forever. Lord, beyond that, we thank you for the security that you provide. Lord, I thank you for your protection. I thank you, Lord, for knowing that, Lord, we never have to worry. Lord, that you don't leave the righteous forsaken or the seed, your seed, bacon bread. Lord Jesus, that our descendants and those that, Lord, have, Lord, been coming to our lives, Lord, that we can leave them a blessing, a legacy, a blessing, a legacy. You are our high tower and our refuge. You are our shield and our buckler. You are, Lord, the horn of our salvation. When we cry out to you, Lord, you hear us you come to save us and secure us Lord protect us from all the power of the enemy we thank you Lord for securing us and the security and Lord Jesus I pray against the spirit of insecurity that might come upon people upon those around us Lord so many people seem so insecure Lord help us to find our confidence our peace our assurance our joy in you tonight for you are the one that Lord saves us and you're the one that secures us how, Lord, I know that my hand is in yours. I know that you care for me. Lord, I don't have to walk alone. Lord Jesus, I don't ever have to walk alone, for you are always with me. Hallelujah. Lord, I've proven it through so many times, so many storms and trials and tests. And you've kept me secure through the storm. Lord, you've kept me safe when the flood came, when the fire came, when the challenges came, Lord. You were there with us, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for being there with us. Lord, if it was not enough for you to save us and secure us, Lord, you have also strengthened us and equipped us to every good work. Lord, we thank you today for strengthening us. Uh, what, come on, what do you need tonight, church? Can we ask him? Thank you, Lord, for what you've done in our past. Thank you for the times when we were weak and weary. When we didn't think we could take another step. And you strengthened us. You strengthened our spirit with a fresh vision and fresh direction. Lord, with humility, you strengthened us. Lord, you strengthened our mind so that we could we could say no to the things that we need to say no to and yes to the things that we need to say right, say yes to do, Lord. You directed our, Lord, to strengthen our thinking, Lord, so that we could be stronger and more powerful. God, I thank you for strengthening our minds and renewing our minds. God, but we thank you also, Lord, for our physical health. And Lord, others, many here have been healed of cancer and disease and sickness. Lord, you've raised many up, Lord, and strengthened and empowered. God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we look to you who strengthens, Lord, who strengthens us, Lord. You strengthen us in every area. Lord Jesus, I pray for those that may need financial help, Lord, today. We look to you as our source of security. We look to you as our force, source of strength, Lord. Help us to be wise, Lord, as we give you that which belongs to you, as we put ourselves under submission to you. God, I pray that your will would be done in our lives. 
and Father, Lord, we must be, we must surrender so you can save us. We must surrender so that we can be secure. We must surrender so you can strengthen us. And finally, Lord, you will share with us your glory. You will share with us your goodness. You will share with us the truths of your word. How many times have you shared with us? the bread of life. How many times have you shared with us and had other people that we love share with us, Lord, the things that you have blessed them with. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those that have shared with us through the years, our pastors and teachers, Lord, those who poured into our lives. Lord, we thank you for those who paid a price to share for with us. Lord, today as we are shared with and share with others, Lord God, I pray that we would be more interested in giving than getting. I pray, God, that we would be more interested, Lord Jesus. And Lord, for we know it is more blessed to give than to receive. Because we receive from you, we have something to give. We have something to share. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would flow through us as we share the gift that we have, the blessings that we have, and above all, the gift of your Holy Spirit flowing in our lives, sharing, Lord, all the truths and, and testimonies that we have with our world. Lord, going forward into this week, save us, secure us, strengthen us, and help us to share with everyone and everywhere we go. We pray this in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love on someone for the next few minutes or so, and then we'll get into our service. Praise the Lord. If you're willing and able, stand with us. Amen. If not, don't worry about it. Amen. We understand. But we're so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Could we lift up our hands and lift up our voices and welcome the presence of the King. Heavenly Father, we have felt you here all day. And we have felt you in our hearts, Lord. And we are so thankful that, Lord, you have come into this place and into our hearts tonight to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to, Lord, to teach us your truths so that we can be stronger and more effective 
in our calling and purpose. Lord Jesus, I pray for all those here tonight that are gifted. And that's every one of us, Lord. Bless us with greater gifts. Help us to multiply them for your glory. Help us, Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the, the Lord, Lord our God, God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for, for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our
on you tonight, but if you do, now will be a good time to get them broken Amen. in the presence of the Lord Amen. and with the God's people here, because the word says, if two or three agree, anybody know what the rest says? If two or three agree touching any one thing, I will do it. Amen. So is there any a prayer requests on my left? Amen. Anyone over here? Okay, very good. Do you know the family name or Jewett? Let's remember the Jewett family with these challenges. Man, the liver is a serious situation. Anybody else? On my right. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you have ever been delivered by some from something? Anybody besides me? Some kind of habit or anything? Yeah, wow. So we know that we can pray for Clifford tonight. Hallelujah. This need will be met. We also the know the God that purifies. Amen. Better than any liver, by the way. He can, get, he can do it all over new and afresh. Let's go to him in prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, not only for these needs, but for the needs that were unspoken, for the needs of those that are online, for the needs of whoever they may be, wherever they may be, the needs that we're going to meet this week as we go through our daily lives. God, prepare us and strengthen us for that, that assurance, Lord, that give us that assurance to speak the word with boldness, to open our mouth boldly to speak the word, and to speak the good news that you have come that you are the one that heals and the one that saves and the one that delivers. Now, God, we pray specifically, Lord, for this family. Lord, you, the Jewett family, Lord, you'd overshadow them. Lord, you see the challenges in their family. Lord God, we pray you would strengthen them and purify and heal, Lord, these bodies. I pray you would grant them faith to believe and faith to receive. And Lord, if their faith is not enough, Lord, hear our faith here tonight. And I pray strengthen our faith to believe in you and strengthen our faith to lay hands upon the promises of your word on their behalf. We pray also the same thing for Clifford tonight. Lord God, we pray the binding, Lord God, of the power of this habit, Lord Jesus, of this desire of any chemical dependency of any mental dependency Lord we pray it be broken in the name of Jesus in the same way that you did it for us Lord you will do it for Clifford tonight and in the name of Jesus we loose healing and deliverance and restoration and God we do not want to leave a gap Lord so we're praying Lord that Lord whatever that need was Lord that caused them to go down that road that it would be filled with your spirit that it would be filled with the assurance that comes from knowing who he is and having the righteousness and the peace and the joy that comes, Lord, from your power in his life. Hallelujah. Can we praise him right now? Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for answering us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our cry. And God, your ear is not deaf that you cannot hear. You know exactly what's going on in our lives, and we trust in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you're seated, to shake a hand or bop heads or elbows or something. Give a hug. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do it to yourself if you need to. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a high five over there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Why not have fun? We're in the house of the Lord. We're safe, secure in his presence. Amen. Just a couple of reminders, of course. We got some uh, we have a small group this week, so we encourage you. If you're not part of a small group, be part of one and join in. 
Amen. And I assume Brooke will be doing some cleaning this week, from what I heard. Already done. And she doesn't make enough of a mess that in two days, no? Okay. So it must not, well, I won't go there. I'd get me in trouble. Um, but we just want to, uh, so whether you were on Tuesday night uh, or on Wednesday night, we encourage you to join a small group. And what a great way to connect and, and be the body of Christ and minister one to another. You know, what we've been talking about the last several weeks should be starting to show up in your small group. Right? That means there should be some apostleship and some prophecy. And we'll talk more about the gifts of the Spirit here tonight. But uh, uh, Lord willing. But um, those things should start showing up in your group. Amen. The fivefold ministry. We want to grow those things in the church. Amen. And that starts by doing it in our homes, doing it in our small groups, and doing it wherever God leads us to go. Uh, so just a reminder of uh, the picnic on next Sunday night at 5 o'clock. So bring a side dish if you want to know. So we don't bring uh, 15 plates of beans. Um, we would like you to maybe talk to Sister Altina right over here. And uh, we are asking everybody to bring a side and dessert. The church is going to supply the meat and uh, lemonade. If you want something else besides lemonade or water, then bring it yourself. Bring your own drink. Amen. We don't believe in bring your own beer. You guys know that. So don't be bringing that stuff. <laughs> BYOD. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And so we encourage you to come. Have it. We're going to have a good time and uh, bless one another and encourage one another. And uh, there's lots of stuff to play and bring a game if you want. Um, I know some people will be out of town, but uh, I was going to suggest you can hang around as long as you want. Uh, play whatever you want to bring, as long as it's not something that wouldn't please the Lord. <laughs> you better put that codicil in there. You guys are such wild people, I have to say that. Don't you? <laughs> I am kidding. I am kidding. Uh, amen. So um, whatever you would like to do, we're going to encourage you to have a good time. Even if you just want to sit around and talk. But being your friends, bring your family, and let's have a great time uh, celebrating uh, the summer harvest. Amen. Celebrating that God has brought us through. And, of course, that's the week before Labor Day. So the next weekend is Labor Day weekend. So we encourage you to be inspired there. I believe the Monday after that, is it is it Tuesday? That school is back in session? The 6th. The 6th. So just a reminder, the 6th at uh, Capital Community will be our back to school for Northeast Christian College. That's probably not in the calendar because I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just, to re, just to let you know. So that's only, that's only two weeks away. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. And, uh, of course, as we move forward, we mentioned several things that we'll be looking forward to. This We'll be talking to you about it in the near future about some of the things that God, we believe God is directing us to do to reach our city. I think it's time to reach our city. Amen, I really do. And I think we do that through Bible studies and through outreaches. I pray that as we go back to school that we are able to uh, be wise about reaching our, our students in, the, in, this, in this city. Amen. Let's pray one more time a blessing on one another. A blessing. Thank you for all you that continue to give in your tithes and offerings. You guys are so faithful. I don't really need to even mention it. So usually we just pray a blessing. So let's pray a blessing. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver. Thank you, Lord. We give cheerfully with joy that you have blessed us so bountifully. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that I can stand here today because of, Lord, your people that are humble, Lord, that give back to you that which belongs to you. Now bless them, Lord, beyond all measure. <coughs> bless them, Lord, in ways that they cannot pay for. Bless them with health and strength. Bless them with wisdom and knowledge. Bless them with discernment. Bless them with the gifts and fruit of the Spirit. Bless them in every way, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together as we uh, transition. I love you, Lord.
close like no other. I've known you as a father, and I've known you as a friend, and I have lived oh, in the goodness. Is it your testimony? Come on, sing it like it's your testimony. So my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness. tonight his goodness is running after you amen we've laid our lives down at his feet and he laid his life down for us wow truly his goodness is coming after us amen it's a wonderful privilege to be able to speak the word with you tonight amen does anybody have any idea what we might be talking about tonight I wonder what it might be Oh, oh, the hand. Oh, that's right. Amen. Amen. As we dig into this a little bit here, we're talking about the hand of ministry that the church has. We've talked about the hand. We're equipped for ministry. We talked about the fivefold ministry last week. And um, I don't know if we're going to wrap it up tonight or not. Probably. Uh, we'll do it more in depth. Uh, I've got a whole series I want to do um, on Contribute. We started early this year with a um, six-part, eight-part, excuse me, eight-part series um, that we, we did with the Connect, and now we want to co contribute, and so I'm working on that. I thought I, thought I was going to do that tonight, but I really feel to uh, talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Now, this will just be an overview. We'll go in depth uh, at a later time, but I do think it's important that uh, we've talked, of course, about the fruit of the Spirit, which shows your maturity uh, as you grow in Christ. But uh, the gifts of the Spirit are used for ministry, and they really don't have anything to do with your maturity. They have to do with innate gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you, uh, just because He wants to. And severally as He will, sometimes He gives more than one to someone. But let me just uh, talk briefly. Let's see if you can remember uh, what we've covered a little bit so far. So we talked about pray up, read up. Show up, give up, build up. So that's the five things that are the basic fundamentals that if you don't have those in place, don't even bother listening tonight except for some future purpose. Because if you can't pray and read the Bible and show up at church and show up in people's lives and give of yourself and build up, then you probably aren't being motivated by love. 
And of course, that's the purpose behind all of it, that you could misuse the gifts or hurt people with those gifts. Uh, the second thing that we talked about is another five. Um, what is she is the five, the apostle, excuse me, the, uh, <clears throat> the fivefold ministry. Um, so the fivefold ministry is what equips the church, the, the structure of the church. And who can tell me what the thumb is? The apostle who governs because he touches all the other things. And that's what gives you. So if we want to get a grip, we need our apostles. We need our missionaries. We need our authority figures in our life. Uh, what's the pointing finger? That's a real tough one. Who's that? The prophet. Amen. He's pointing things out. He's pointing the way. Um, so we need the prophets in our lives. We need those that will speak prophetic words. Um, what's the long or middle finger? What's that about? That's the evangelist, the one that reaches the farthest to grab something. They sometimes barely touch it, but they reach farther than a lot of times the rest of us. And then the ring finger? The pastor who guards Right? He guards us. He watches over us. He sees what's going on in the culture, the local church, and he guards the flock. And his heart is to shepherd or pastor the flock. And then finally, the little finger to teach, the one that brings balance into our lives and grounds us. If you want the G word there, so we have govern, guide, right? Gather, right? Guard and ground. And so that's the fivefold ministry. And so that's what the church has supplied. God, the body of Christ, Jesus has equipped the church. And they actually are considered gifts to the church. That's what the Bible says. That these ministers are given as gifts to the church to serve the body. Um, just like we all are called and equipped uh, to be ministers. And so the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And so let's talk a little, about, a little bit about ministry tonight. Now, we've talked already a little bit in one of our sessions on seven things that God, our first night, we talked about seven things, uh, seven areas. And there's actually, some people say seven. At one place, uh, uh, Paul writes about seven gifts. Another place, he writes about 11 um, gifts of ministry, which we'll talk about. Those are more natural gifts. Uh, these are supernatural gifts. These are the ones that come not just because of the Holy Spirit working in us and us developing ourselves, but these gifts that we're talking about tonight are the supernatural ones. And I haven't talked much about these with our church, um, but I, I want to share this with you because as we move forward, we're going to need these supernatural gifts if you want to reach the lost. Uh, and by the way, uh, let me just ask you, and I'm, I'm not mean to put anybody on the spot, but it's just the church here tonight. We'll include Margaret. Amen. And so how many of you here tonight know what some of your spiritual gifts are? Anybody know what your gift of the Spirit is? Spiritual gifts? You got spiritual gifts? Okay, good. A couple of you. So the rest of you, you already have it. Did you know you already are gifted? We already said that many times. Say, I'm gifted. Oh, Kevin, I didn't hear you say it, man. I'm going to pick on you. I didn't see you either, Connors. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. I'm gifted. I'm gifted. You guys are like, well, I'm not going to talk now. <laughs> no. No, the reason I'm saying this, because we, I, I, it's funny when I had you guys say it last week, you're like, oh, well, I'm gifted, you're gifted, oh my. It's like, yeah, you are, God made you that way, you're gifted, you're gifted, Cass, what can you say? He's like, I've known that, I know it, I know it, we're gifted, and so we'll, we'll, we'll embrace that identity. You know, the enemy wants to tell you that you're worthless, he wants to tell you that you have no value, but God created you unique and on and purpose and different you have natural gifts you have gifts that god will uh supernaturally extend and multiply to minister to the body is that what the bible teaches that when you have two talents that you're supposed to multiply it that if you have five you're supposed to multiply it and if you have one don't bury it for heaven's sake don't bury it that'll get you in trouble uh, so we want to use what god has given us and so the pastor's doing a little digging around um and seeing what gold we got in them their hills amen amen and, and i believe that each one of you uh i know it it's actually scriptural and so if you don't believe me well let's just take a look at what paul had to say to the church in corinth so we're talking about the gifts of the spirit tonight now i'm not going to go in i said again i don't have time to go in depth we only have about i try to keep us to about 30 minutes uh approximately on on sunday nights uh, but i do think it's important that we at least overview these because what you may find is that the Holy Spirit in the past or 
even today or in some near future, as you're in the flow of the Spirit, as you're walking in the Spirit, as you're praying, as you're doing your pray up, read up, give up, show up, build up, as you're looking for these opportunities, God, God will supernaturally empower you at times, and you'll begin to wonder if you're, something's wrong with you. But it's not something wrong. It's something right. It's something that's supernatural, something that God wants to use you so that the body can be edified. But let's look at some of the ground rules here. We'll go into greater detail at some future time. But I do want to I do want to at least touch this at a cursory level or at a very brief and thumbnail sketch level, if you'll allow me to tonight. And now for to do that, all we're going to do is go through the first 11 verses of Corinthians, and then I'll make a few comments to kind of help uh, solidify that. If you have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses, verse 1, if you're there, just say amen. 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 I know you're all half of you are cheating, but that's okay. I'll let you get away with it. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So we should not be unknowing of the gifts of the Spirit. Spiritual gifts. Okay? So God does not want us to be ignorant. Your pastor doesn't want you to be ignorant. Um, you know that you were Gentiles, as he goes on to say, carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Okay? So you know that when you were living in the world, you followed idols and you, um, you f- served things that were dead, but no longer. Therefore, I make known, known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So he's setting up some things here to help you understand the importance of spiritual gifts and their context. He's helping you understand that, number one, idols don't give you supernatural gifts. There's no power in idols to give you supernatural gifts. And that we have to be careful because people will lead us to things that are dead. And I don't mean this in a harsh way, but um, the gifts of the Spirit... Show up in the lives of people that are alive in the Spirit. That's kind of what he's saying here if you pay attention, right? Because he's saying, therefore make note that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls. So he's, he, he's making one very clear uh, distinction here is that people may speak up and claim to be speaking, claim to be speaking by the Spirit of God, but they could also be speaking from demonic forces and things like that. So we have to be discerning. And one of the ways that you can tell that is that they never curse Jesus. Now, this accursed here, remember what we talked about recently about what cursed means. Cursed doesn't mean that you're specifically saying a curse over Jesus. I curse you, Jesus. It's not mean that. It means you're tearing him down. You're lowering his value. You're not edifying him. You're not magnifying him. So that's a much broader thing, isn't it? You're not trying to belittle or make less of who Jesus is. This is important because there's a lot of people in our world today that are making light of who Christ is. Would you agree? There's a lot of that in our world. And um, just so you know, anybody that says I'm a Christian (laughs) and says that Jesus is not of God, that Jesus is accursed or less than what he is, if they're saying he's less than the Son of God, you might want to check that out. If If they're saying he's less than divine, then they got a problem. If they're saying he was not born of a virgin, they're, they're, that's calling him accursed. It really is. It's calling him less than what he is. Does that make sense? And so anytime you hear someone prophesying, if in any way they put down Jesus and make him less than the highest and the mightiest and the very manifest image of God, what we can see, then there's a problem. Okay? And we see this several times through Scripture. Um, this was a combating an issue, uh, of course, of the Jews a lot of the Jews were trying to make Jesus less. Uh, many people in different cultures were trying to make him just another God, make him like other idols, but he's not an idol. He is God manifest in flesh. He's not the same thing. And this is really important. This is foundational because that's, that's really one of the best ways to know if this is of the Spirit. When people are saying they're of the Spirit, you can't use that to edify yourself and make yourself greater than God or better, greater than Jesus. Uh, in fact, there should be some humility, humility there and submission there. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord, it goes on to say, doing the opposite side of it, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, what it's talking about here is now is anybody can say that Jesus is Lord and be lying. So what do you think that means? What do you think it means, Conrad? I've taught you many times. So what's that word Lord mean? Master. 
submitted to him. So, in other words, I'm under his authority. If someone's not surrendered to some line of authority, especially Jesus, but including the line of authority, the fivefold ministry, remember we've already talked about those things, that's the context and the structure for the church that we talked about last week. I mean, that's, those are the bones of the body, so to speak. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. And so the muscles of the body and the power of the body, the internal organs of the body, what we basically are talking about tonight. And so you really, when you look at this, it's really important to understand that everything is under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Everything reports back to the head of the body. This is a really important concept. That's how things work together. That's why the heart still beats. That's why our lungs breathe autonomously. You didn't think about it, but you've breathed about 15 times a minute since you've been in here. That's pretty crazy, 15 to 20 times, depending on how excited you got <laughs> and how healthy you are. And so basically what he's saying here is the only way that you can really say that he is Lord is if the Holy Spirit's in your life. Because if the Holy Spirit's not in control of you, guess what? He's not Lord. You remember, remember the, some of the old time songs? Amen. It talks about he, he's still Lord. He's still Lord. He has risen from the dead. He's still Lord. And there's other ones that talk about I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender. I mean, you can't call him Lord. You can't really say he's in charge if the Holy Spirit is not controlling what you do. And so the Holy Spirit is what makes him truly the Lord of your life. Now, why is this important, do you think? Anybody want to take a guess? Why would this be important to getting ready to talk about spiritual gifts. Knowing where it comes from. Yes. Knowing that it comes from being under submission to God. Here's one of the interesting things is the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In other words, God gives spiritual gifts to a lot of people. It doesn't mean everybody's under his lordship, though. The interesting thing is spiritual gifts can be used for evil. Is that true? Do you really believe the stories of the Scripture? Where it says people called up the dead, like Samuel call was called up from the grave by a witch, right? Do you believe those stories? Does that mean that somebody had a gift or a, a supernatural gift? Yes, they did. Now people start getting a little scared. But the, the, the beautiful thing is, is that God has more powerful gifts. And so what Satan can do, God can do better. Amen? And better. Amen. Those things come from um, spirits and, and possession. Uh, even, we even remember, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into great detail here, but let's not forget the time that, you know, they're walking through the city, and there's a lady falling behind the apostles, and she's telling them these are this, you know, this and that, and they're telling all prophecies, and she's, she's full of demons, and they turn around, and they get tired of it after about three days, and they turn around and rebuke her, rebuke her and all the demons come out, and the, then they, get <laughs> then they get in trouble with the people in the city because they made a lot of money off of her. And so these are real things. And I, any of you who have been around the church, a church that's full of the Spirit, uh, knows that there's serious, serious things going on in the Spirit realm. By the way, if you're younger in Christ, don't dabble in this stuff. Um, you need to be uh, strong in the Lord. But you do need to be aware of it because you have these gifts. Uh, you have gifts, of, gifts that we'll be talking about here in a minute. So basically what we're saying is here is that the world has their own supernatural things. But God's way is such that everybody in this room that's full of the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit and is under the control of the Holy Spirit has a gift. Now, so let's look a little further if you don't believe what I'm saying. Let's look a little closer here. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Diversity just means different kinds. We speak about diversity a lot in our culture today. They're not talking about this. <laughs> it does have the same basic Meaning, though, it means there's a multiplicity, different kinds of gifts. But the same spirit. In other words, the same motive, the same power, it comes from God. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from our ability. It isn't coming from our, us, our own hearts, our own minds, our own will. It comes from the spirit of God. And you can see there, uh, it's very clear, he's talking about spirit, which is capitalized. Um, so there are differences of ministries. But the same Lord. So again, he's still laying the ground rule, even though we have different callings and a different um, abilities to serve people, maybe different levels of ability. It's still all about serving the Lord. It's still about him being in control. Okay? Now, so there's some context here. The church in Corinth was having trouble with some of these issues because they were, a lot of them were wanting to speak in tongues all the time. All the time. Right? 
And then they, were, they didn't want to do any interpretation. They just wanted to be super spiritual to the extent that no one was edified. And then when people came to the church, they thought, what a bunch of Fruit Loops. Right? Lots of different colors and <laughs> just with a hole in the middle. Okay? <laughs> in their head, maybe. I don't know. But they were having some trouble. And they were all trying to be more spiritual than the next person. By talking louder, longer, and more confusedly, uh, if you can say it that way. Um, they were not being under any authority. They were assuming that if I am in the Spirit, I am the one that should be speaking. Well, what if they're all in the Spirit? What if we're all in the Spirit? Should we all be speaking at the same time? And so he talks about, he's addressing some of these issues, right? So he talks about there's diversities of activities. But it's the same God who works all in all. Now, what he's talking about here is that God is in control and that we need to be unified. We need to be doing this. Understand the motive behind what he's saying. He's saying this is meant to minister the body. In other words, different parts of the body don't try and show that they're more important than the other parts of the body. Your eye isn't suddenly start talking to you and saying, I'm more important than the mouth. You know? Your hand isn't suddenly say, you know, start aching just so you'll notice that it's, you know, more important than your foot. At least you prefer for it not to. <laughs> um, and so we have to be careful here. I mean, we, we have to be careful here that we remember that the ministry, especially the gifts of the Spirit, they have a very specific purpose. They're to strengthen and encourage the church, okay? And so, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So this is a manifestation of the Spirit. This is not a natural thing. It's not a natural gift, although sometimes it lines up with your natural gifts, probably because you're more aware of that flow and more aware of that aspect of God. If you're kind of a discerning person, then probably it's quite possible that you'll have discerning of spirits, which we'll talk about in a minute briefly. But uh, if, you're, if you're a person that's discerning in terms of um, you have a, a, a tendency to see into the future, then a lot of times God will give you supernatural ability to do that. Um, and so uh, it goes beyond what any comprehension or knowledge. In other words, you can walk into a room, into a church you've never been in, and you can start ministering and prophesying and uh, whatever the case may be, uh, laying hands on those sick and then recovering, whatever those gifts might be. Okay? So the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one, can you say each one with me? Each one. Wow. Each one. Every part of the body has a spiritual gift. For the profit of all. For to one, and here we go through the list. So here's the nine gifts of the Spirit according to uh, what we have here in 1 Corinthians 12. Now these are the supernatural gifts again, just to reemphasize that. Okay. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the, say with me, same Spirit. Catching a theme here, he's trying to make sure they understand. This comes from God, not from you. So try and stop trying to get glory for yourself and trying to show your hot stuff. This is not the purpose of the gifts. I mean, look how spiritual I am. Right? No, no. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about the body. And uh, we have to watch that because it has to be about uh, submission to the body. And he, he goes, and he just keeps hammering it, doesn't he? To another faith, by the same, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another work, working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another different kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. And he wraps it up again here. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. Amen. Now, you may be jealous of someone else's gifts, and actually the Bible says you can be. It's okay to jealously desire or yearn for someone else's spirit, supernatural gift. And maybe if you ask for it, he's a gift giver. He likes giving gifts. So I encourage you to earnestly desire and ask God for these gifts. If you have not been using the gifts of the Spirit, then make it a matter of prayer. Make sure you check yourself. Are you praying and reading your Bible? Are you connected to Christ? Is He the Lord of your life? Make sure you understand the, the role of the, the church leaders in the, in the assembly to govern you and guide you and provide a line of authority in your life, just like the natural body does. 
and structure so that the muscles of the body, the power, especially the supernatural power in the spiritual body can do its work. Okay, so let's look at the gifts of revelation very briefly here. We got about 15 minutes or so. So I think we have some time. I'm not going to read all these scriptures, but you certainly might want to put them down if, you, if you're uh, wanting to study them later. I'm not going to read these scriptures. I'm just going to kind of give definitions. But discernment, you can find this in 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Um, you'll see an example there and a an, an description there. Discernment, or the gift of discernment, is the ability to distinguish right from wrong, truth from error, and to give an immediate evaluation based on God's Word. The ability to discern whether the source of an experience... Now, this is important. When someone tears a testimony or shares an experience, we need to know whether it's from Satan, from self, or from God's Spirit. So there's three sources where someone can share something. Now, this is important stuff because this is levels of maturity. When someone shares a story, do not be ignorant about these things. Be aware that when someone shares something, and it may be even a member of the church, because the Bible says that, you know, the enemy will send the wolves among us. So be aware that you have to be careful because some people, they're sharing what Satan is actually saying from Satan's power. They're sharing it from their own self. It's actually not divine. Or it could be a discerning word from God himself. And so um, there's some... It's, it's kind of important that you understand where that's coming from, and it's important that we have the ability and that we trust certain people who have a discerning spirit. Um, and so I encourage you to pray about that. And if you're not sure, again, go and pray about it this week. And First John, we're equipping ourselves, remember, to minister to people. So we're equipping ourselves to minister to the body, to those in the church and to those outside the church. Amen. This is where people start really realizing we are the church. Because they're supernatural acts. And so discernment is uh, when you see through and see truth, you can immediately figure out whether it's heresy or not, whether it's truth or whether it's error. And that's a kind of a, a huge help to the church, isn't it? That someone can immediately know if something is not of God, not of the Spirit, whether it's of self or whether it's of Satan. Okay? It could just be your spirit being really excited about something. Um, that can happen. It doesn't always, that overwhelming sense of euphoria and thrill of the Spirit isn't always God. It could be us too. It could be our response to what God has done. So we have to be aware of that. And just people that are, have gift of discernment can help us work through that. And hopefully they'll do it with gentleness and kindness to encourage us and strengthen us not to make us afraid. Uh, sometimes we don't even know our own motives sometimes or where it's coming from. So we, uh, we are thankful for the people that have the gift of discernment. Uh, the second thing, the second gift of revelation, um, and these are not, it doesn't say this in the Word of God. We're just breaking them down into three categories that are generally accepted um, <coughs> by most people that are, that are aware of these gifts of the Spirit. So the first three are of re gifts of revelation or discernment. Number two, knowledge, which is, you can find in 1 Corinthians 12, 8, of course. Um, and then, of course, in Daniel 1, verse 17, God gives supernatural knowledge. Uh, he's very clear about that there, by the way. It's really interesting. So the, it's, this is the ability to receive specific information from the Holy Spirit that meets a particular need. Specific information that meets a very specific or particular need. It's also the ability to comprehend and clarify a large amount of information and provide it when needed for effective decision making. And can you imagine? No, it, it, you can understand now why they chose Daniel. If he was gifted in this way, where he could take a lot of information, he could read all the reports from all over, all over the land, and he's serving the Medes and the Persians and all that, and he's, he's doing all that with them, right? And he's reading all this material. Can you imagine having a man like him on your staff that can take all that and compress it down, and this is the pertinent points? And, man, that person has a lot of value. And so the value to the body, to the church, um, he helps uh, clarify things and and he's able to comprehend uh, complex concepts. Uh, and this is supernatural here. We're not talking about natural knowledge. We're talking about able to take things that are just beyond any human's ability and just make it, um, make the individual understand it in such a way that the entire church family benefits and is blessed. Isn't that amazing? 
Because you that that's what we want. We need people that can can see and have that gift of knowledge, and they can take what's going on in the world or or get specific information about a specific situation and help us. Um, and so we need those gifts of knowledge. And and um, honestly, I have been used in that gift several times, and probably some of you have too. Maybe you didn't know it, but you had a very strong pressure from the Holy Spirit that that doesn't feel right. You know, it may be the gift of discernment. It may be a specific, very specific words that come to your mind or a very specific thing. Um, it happens sometimes to me um, when people uh, even make phone calls to me. It happened to me a couple times this week, actually, about people that called me. I really didn't know for sure why they were calling. Um, sometimes it can be natural. Sometimes it can be supernatural. Uh, but in this case, uh, probably supernatural. Uh, and God gives that to you to edify so you can meet the need and help those individuals uh, deal with whatever situation or avoid problems in the future. Uh, the, third, the third revelation or gift of revelation is wisdom. Uh, and this is 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 6 through 16, which you were kind of talking about. Uh, you can look up that up. And also verse, uh, we just read in verse 12 through 8, uh, excuse me, uh, chapter 12, verse 8. Uh, the ability to know the mind of the Holy Spirit and receive supernatural insight into how given knowledge. So this is how knowledge is to be used and applied to the circumstance. So it's one thing to know what to know what the problem is. It's a whole other thing to know what to do and how it should be applied, what we should do going forward. Um, and of course, many times in Scripture, you'll see people, people of God, men of God um, that have wisdom. They kind of know what the Holy Spirit is saying, they know how to, and they have supernatural insight into how what is known should be applied or how we should move forward. And can you imagine the value of that to the body? That's an amazing thing to have uh, if you've got questions or concerns. Also, the ability to understand God's perspective on situations. What is God saying about this situation? What is God saying about what's going on in our culture? What's God saying about what, make, what a woman is and what a man is and all these kinds of cultural issues that we've got going on. What should our response be? We want more than just knowledge and from the Word. We, sometimes we need supernatural wisdom. Uh, and share those insights in a simple, understandable way so that God's guidance can be given to others so we can share it and we, we can move forward in ways that are helpful to the entire church body. Okay, so gifts of revelation, discernment, knowledge, and wisdom. Let's move on to gifts of communication. And again, this is an overview, and I apologize that we're moving so quickly. We can dig into these at another time, but I do encourage you to make it a matter of prayer, which is why I'm talking to you about it, because I think we'll need these in the next several months if, as we move forward, if, as we reach our community. Prophecy, 1 Corinthians 12, 10, and of course, uh, 14, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. This is the ability to receive. These are gifts of communication. The next three are gifts of communication to kind of help you put those the next three into a category. Um, the ability to receive and communicate an immediate message of God to his people through a divinely or, or anointed utterance. It's usually given in the language of the speaker and the hearers. Okay? So prophecy is heard. It's understood. It's a prophetic word. That everybody understands because it's in the language of the hearer and the one that's speaking. Make sense? Okay, now this is supernatural prophecy. This is very specific. It's beyond human knowledge. It's knowledge that comes directly from God. And it's an immediate message that comes right out right then. And um, it's, it's powerful. Uh, it can be an incredibly powerful way of speaking. So that's why we call them prophets, by the way. It's a direct word from God. Uh, that speaks sometimes of future things or current things or points out existing issues or challenges. And so we've seen that happen many times in, our, in my walk with God. Um, gifts of communication. The second one is tongues. And uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, and Corinthians chapter 14, 13 to 14. This is the gift of tongues is the ability to easily move into the realm of the Spirit and begin to speak with tongues on a regular basis. Um, now, this is talking about um, easily, where it's kind of like, man, if it's really easy for you to do that. I'm not talking about just the initial sign of in being filled with the Spirit, but this, this gift of tongues. It's the ability to pray in the Spirit with other tongues and allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you. It's usually, if it's done in a setting like this, it's because God is speaking a word in the Spirit realm 
to every spirit in that building, to every soul in that building. And with the gift of tongues, there should also be an interpretation of tongues. So just be very clear about that. In fact, Paul goes on to talk about this. We're not going to talk about this uh, in great detail tonight, but there's very specific rules for this that Paul set up for the church. He said if, if, three, te- if three people want to speak in tongues, that's fine, but after the third time, somebody needs to interpret. Otherwise, people are going to just think you're a bunch of babbling fools. That are not going to, besides, it's not helpful. It may encourage the, the one that's speaking in tongues, because that's one of the beautiful things about speaking in tongues is that it it's encourages your soul. It's a way to pray in the Spirit where you can, you can pray for things you don't have knowledge of. That's one reason why we need to pray in tongues sometimes. Because what it does is we pray things that we don't know. And so the Holy Spirit needs to speak through us to pray in a language that we do not know. Um, and so um, this is often, some people call this intercessory prayer, but really uh, that can be, you can do intercessory prayer without tongues. But um, the gift of tongues is moving into that realm and oftentimes speaking a prophetic word from God or, or speaking and praying in the Spirit um, on a regular basis. It's usually the Holy Spirit wants to pray through you um, and He wants to speak through you, okay? And so those can also be prophetic words, but no one knows what you're saying. So we need the gift of prophecy or interpretation, which is what we're coming up next. So prophecy just comes straight out. The next one is interpretation. So when there's a tongues, there should also be an interpretation of tongues. You find this in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, and also in chapter 14, verse 27 and 28. It's the ability to make known in the vernacular of the hearers, in other words, the words of the hearers or the language of the hearers, the message of the one who gives a public anointed utterance from God in an unknown tongue. So if there's a public utterance in an unknown tongue, there should also be an interpreter. Now, usually these are separate people. Usually someone gives tongues and someone else gives the interpretation. What that does usually is that allows there to be confirmation that it was from the Lord. Now, that doesn't have to happen. I have seen people speak in tongues and then interpret it themselves. But usually, um, and so you can have both gifts, no question. Uh, I've also seen people be prophetic. They don't even use tongues at all. They just come right out and say the Word of God. But there is a place also, and we've experienced this many times, and I'm sure you have too if you've been in Pentecostal churches where someone speaks with the gift of tongues, you feel that anointing, you feel that assurance in the spirit that it's that it's from God. Especially the discerning ones are going to know if it's from if it's from Satan, if it's from self, or if it's from God. Because sometimes people get really overwhelmed and they speak in tongues, but they're speaking actually in their own spirit. They're speaking for their own edification, or they're talking to God about an issue in their own life, and you really probably don't want that interpreted. Maybe just a thought. Was that just my sense of humor? <laughs> Did you want that interpreted? Probably not. (laughs) I've been using the gift of interpretation, and there was a few times I didn't say anything because I don't think anybody really wanted to know. (laughs) And I'm not sure they wanted anybody to know either. Uh, And thankfully, God doesn't give me the whole message. I don't really want to know everything they said. He usually just gives me the first words, and then we go from there. And so so those are the gifts of communication. The last three, as we wrap it up here, are gifts of demonstration. And we know that at least one person here has one of these gifts because he's used in it fairly frequently. Um, but we have gifts of demonstration. And, of course, uh, if you'll notice, uh, Jesus had all of these. He had all these. Amen. Um, so let's talk about the gifts of demonstration. 1 Corinthians 12, 9 in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 11 in 1 Corinthians 12, 9. Uh, the gift of healing. This is supernatural ability, the ability to pray in faith specifically for people who need physical, emotional, or spiritual healing and see God answer, and that answer brings glory to His name and attention to the gospel. Okay? So that's the purpose behind gifts of healing. The ability to sense when God is prompting you to pray this kind of prayer. So if you feel prompted, if you've ever felt prompted to go pray for someone that you know God wants to heal, then God just used you in that gift. So some of you didn't know you were even that gifted, did you? God will use you to, ele- to heal someone. Um, and he's used me to do it, and that's not really my gifting. But uh, he's used me to heal hands on, this, on them. And a lot of times it comes with co- a lot of compassion. There's this moving of compassion, isn't there, Brother Nelson? There's this moving of compassion, and you just feel for people, and you go to them, and you pray with them, and you, you kind of know what's going on. there. There's a gift of he- miracles. This is found in 1 Corinthians 12.10, of course, 
which we just read, and then in Acts chapter 28, verse 1 through 6, the gift of miracles, the ability to pray in faith specifically for God's supernatural intervention into an impossible situation and see God answer, bringing glory to his name and attention to the gospel. It's very similar to the gift of healing, except healing can be over, over time. Miracles are usually immediate. Boom. Just like that. I'm so tempted. To, oh, I'm going to just go ahead and say it. I can have fun, can I? Boom, there it is. There it is. Amen. That's right. The ability to sense when God is prompting you to pray this kind of prayer. So miracles are immediate, very clear, supernatural intervention in impossible situations. And so that's amazing. Um, and it can be more, obviously, than just healing, right? Because miracles can be turning water to wine. Miracles can be meeting a need that has nothing to do with uh, a healing, right? Does that make sense? So miracles have a kind of a broader category, and they're usually immediate. They are usually just instantaneous. Uh, I want you to take this bread and go and pass it out. Okay. And it goes from five loaves to feeding 5,000, right? That's, that's, that's a miracle, right? That's not a healing, so that's a demonstration of God's power, ability, and authority. And then finally, in the gifts of demonstration, we see the gift of faith. And, of course, it's in the text that we just read tonight in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And also you can find it further information in Romans chapter 4, 20 through 21. This is the ability to trust God or to inspire trust in God for what cannot be seen and to act on God's promise regardless of what the circumstances indicate. Wow. Also, the willingness to risk failure in pursuit of a God-given vision, expecting God to handle the obstacles. Now, <laughs> you know, we all want supernatural things in our life. I will, I will say to you, uh, if you're not an experienced Christian, you're not a mature Christian, uh, do not um, tempt God with these things. <laughs> In other words, don't assume. Make sure that it's God that's talking to you. Amen. Especially when you're starting out. Um, there should be a recognized recognition of your gifts. I'm not going to go into great detail here because that's not our purpose tonight. I just want to give you an overview of this. But you have these gifts. You have at least one of these gifts if you're full of the Holy Spirit. Because it doesn't come from you. It comes from God that's in you. It comes from the Spirit flowing in your lives. You have one of these gifts. And if you will look back over your walk with God, you will find, if you're at a level of maturity now, if you're, you know, you're still young in the Lord or you're not growing in the Lord, then this may not have happened to you. But if you're growing in the Lord and you start being moved by the Spirit, you start thinking about other people and you start caring about other people, you're going to find these gifts start coming into play. Because God's going to start using you to minister to other people. Because it's not about us. It's about the body and it's about the world that we live in and about God being glorified and being brought into the proper position in people's lives so people can see his greatness. Amen. Um, I, I'm going to ask you, as you as I went through these, I want you to think about, I'm going to just go through this list one more time, and I want you to ask the question of yourself or answer the question to yourself, I'm pretty sure I have this gift. If you're pretty sure you have the gift, then ask that God would activate it because we need it in the church. We need it in the body. We need it in your small group. We need it in your family. Uh, if you may have the gift, you think, well, I might have that gift, then, then kind of maybe make it a matter of prayer. Uh, we want this church to be a church that's full of the gifts of the Spirit. Can I get any amen there? Does anybody want the gifts of the Spirit? Anybody would like some divine healing, some divine miracles, some words of knowledge? You ever face a challenging situation? Well, we need it. We want it. And so if we will do the basics, which we've been talking about for quite a while now since I've been your pastor, and if we will uh, acknowledge the lines of authority and put him in lordship in our life, and we understand it's by his power and ability that we do these things, and we're doing them for the sake of other people being strengthened, then God wants to minister to the body, and you have a gift, so don't bury it. We already know the danger of burying it. You're gonna have, you don't want to get in trouble with the Lord. Uh, Lord, if you'd come. And the third thing um, is I don't think I have this gift. That's okay. You may not have every gift. God gives severally as He will. He will give everyone at least one gift. Amen. He will. He will give you a gift. It will fit with your calling. It will fit with you, what God has called you to do and to be in the world. And uh, you will make a difference in your world. So let me list that one more time. I know you can read it yourself in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But just a reminder, number one, the gift of discernment. 
Number two, the gift of knowledge. Is that your gift? How about the gift of wisdom? To be able to give people wise counsel in how to apply things to their life and knowledge to their life. How about the gift of prophecy? Supernatural prophetic words that speak very clearly to people about what's coming, about something in their life. Gift of tongues, where you speak in another language as the Spirit speaks through you. Um, sometimes with words in a public setting that, that need to be interpreted. Um, also the gift of interpretation. Of course, translating what was spoken in another tongue into a known language. Amen. The gifts of healing. The demonstration of God's power by laying on of hands until there's healing. Uh, many people, when they lay on of hands, if you've ever felt your palms burning or a heat, a lot of times that comes with a, some kind of a physical feeling when you lay hands on people. So if you ever feel that burning sensation and God's talking to you about praying for someone, you probably should go do it. Amen. Gift of miracles. If you feel and you think, man, and you're, you know, feel that pressure of the Holy Spirit. You know, we want to give room for these things. None of us are perfect. And kids don't learn to walk overnight. They have to practice. They have to try things. I don't know about you, but I want to create an environment in our church where people feel safe enough in our church settings, in our small groups, to try it out. Well, I just really feel that pressure of the Holy Spirit. And I, I know my, you know, I don't really want to give a gift of tongues, but man, it's really hard not to. And maybe God's pressuring you, or maybe you have a word very clear word. As long as you're under the authority, as long as you're willing for me to say, well, thank you for sharing that, that ministry and, or, or something like that. If you're, as long as you're willing to submit to the line of authority, we, can, we, we need to do these things in a proper setting, in a proper place. And what it will do is as we practice these things and we start to discern between when it's me, when it's the enemy prompting me, hopefully that's not much of a problem in the room, <laughs> or when it's, our, when it's from God himself. And uh, we learn these things. And uh, as some of you have know, I've been used in some of these gifts, many of these gifts, uh, for many years. And I really, I, I want to see them more active. I want to see them more active in me. Amen. Would you stand together with me? And let's lift our hands to the Lord and surrender. Let's acknowledge His Lordship. Let's surrender to Him tonight. And let's ask God. Uh, amen. If, you're, if you don't have a gift, that's fine. But you, if you even think you might have a gift, would you ask God to uh, open your eyes and open your heart? So Because we need these things. We need the gift of faith. We need the gift of miracles. We need people to be healed in this house of their spirit and their soul and their body. We need people to have words of knowledge and direction in their lives that's supernatural. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, our unfailing God wants to speak to us through other people. And minister to us through other members of the body. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. Lord, we want to be fully, Lord, energized and powerful as a church. God, we don't want to just have the fruits of the Spirit. Lots of churches, Lord God, are using the fruits of the Spirit. But God, we want the gifts of the Spirit where there's powerful demonstration of your glory and your authority. And Lord God, where the line of authority in the church allows the flow of power. Lord Jesus, what we preach this morning about righteousness is part of the pathway to Lord Jesus, the, this powerful supernatural work in our lives. Because when there's purity... Lord God, your spirit can flow through us without damaging us. Oh God, when there's purity, Lord God, when we are righteous because of your blood, then you can flow through us to demonstrate, Lord, these powerful words of communication, these powerful demonstration, Lord Jesus of the Spirit, these powerful words of knowledge and understanding. God, we pray these things, Lord, to your glory. Oh God, we pray, loose these. Would you pray that right now? Lord, loosen me the gift. Would you say it to him, Lord, loosen me the gift. Loosen me so that the people might be blessed. Loosen me, Lord, so that someone on the street or someone in the store, Lord God, you can help me to minister to them. God, the world needs a church that's full of the power. Lord, we desire. Your word says to desire the gifts. Lord, I desire the gifts of the Spirit, not for my glory, but so that the church might be strengthened, so that people might know, because this is one of the signs that we are your people, is that there's gifts of power, powerful gifts of the Spirit moving among us. Oh, God, 
Lord, let it not be the gift from a gift from Satan. Let it not be a gift from self, but let it be gifts from God. Lord, supernatural, spiritual gifts, pure and holy, righteous and true. Lord, we are under your authority. You are the Lord in our life. Lord, let the Spirit flow in us. <laughs> it's a Lord. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Amen. This is an old song. It's kind of a fast paced song, so let's get it together. Amen. Oh Lord, send the power just now. Come on. Oh Lord. Send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Come on, is that your prayer right now? Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Send the power, Lord, of tongues, interpretation, prophecy. Send the Lord, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Lord, send it right now, Lord. And baptize everyone. Yes, oh Lord, send the power just now. Hey, oh Lord, send the power just now. Oh Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. <laughs> Oh, there's an open door of ministry before us, church. Who's going to walk with the pastor through that door to meet the needs of our community, to meet the needs of our family, to meet the needs of the church, to please the Lord? Amen. I pray that you would pray every day this week, Lord. Open my eyes. Put a pressure in my soul. Fill me with that power and let it have an outlet in my life. Let it have an outlet. These are the power tools of the church. Amen. We need to break off some things in our culture. We need to break some things off from our families, don't we? It takes some power. Amen. We need the gifts of the Spirit. We need the words of knowledge, wisdom, discernment. Uh, amen. Tongues and interpretation. We need these words. Amen. These supernatural gifts. God has them for us. God has them for us. Don't leave them on layaway too long. They're already bought and paid for, folks. Come on, let's go get it. Let's go get what God has for us. The body of Christ needs it. Our world needs people full of the power of Jesus. Can we uh, conclude tonight by lifting our hands and surrender and asking one more time for God to go with us. Lord, go with us. Go before us. Prepare the way. Open the door for us to be used, Lord. Lord, not only in the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, not only to minister, Lord, but God, to be used, Lord, in supernatural ways. Oh, God, there is power, Lord Jesus. And we don't want the enemy stealing and killing and destroying. Lord, give us wisdom and discernment and knowledge. And help us not to leave, brothers and sisters, without the knowledge that you've given us, the wisdom you've given us, the prophetic words, the, the healing gifts that you've given us. Oh, God, help us to use them for the edifying encouragement of the body of Christ and this world, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go and do likewise.